Hello everyone, my name is Mink Warrior, and we're back playing Soma! Last episode, we found a power suit, and now we would need to uh, transfer ourselves into this power suit so that we could go into the abyss. Uh, we need certain parts, so I'm just exploring the, the Omnicron facility and get certain parts. Uh, I, I actually can't remember which ones, but I'm sure that... Uh, Catherine or Simon will let me know if I get close to the item. So it's getting creepy. It's quiet. Too quiet for my tastes. And okay, so it's... It's about... Oh, sorry. It's about things that... Ah! I knew it. See? I knew it. If on the last episode I went inside... I went inside here and I knew it. I knew something was there. Something's there. Damn it. Destroy wow. Hmm. So if I probably um, we suffer. Okay, um, hmm, not sure what to do with you. Let's see, uh, Ruffy, Jacob Halperin, an unusually sedated orange roughly found a hovering outside Omicron substation. It had a remarkable bone growth that seemed to interfere with its perception. Brought it inside to study it, but it stiffened and died in the process. During post-modem study, the thing kicked back to life will, while being out of water. Kept swinging for a few minutes, so I returned it into aquarium. Instantly started banging into the glass and bludgeoned itself to death before I could relocate it. Orange. Dead on arrival. Darby and Waldeck identified it as sabotaging the Lumar probe. At about 900 meters depth, it is a 150 centimeter long rudder fish that looks like it has merged with some other kind of fish or shark. It's the freakiest form of mutation we've seen so far. It's clear that it is getting worse. Something is causing this and I'm not buying the radioactive fallout nonsense that Overy can't shut up about. Johan Ross. A dead man found on the climber this morning has been identified as Johan Ross, the AI psychologist working at Tau. I can't even begin to imagine what has happened down in the abyss and frankly I won't risk losing my staff by going down there to look. If the ARC team is alive, which I highly doubt, they will have to find a way to give us a sign. We're not going down there again without good reason. Hmm. I'm thinking about unlocking it. Take the gel. We're gonna die. Reset sequence. Sure. 
Okay, so system overload, huh? Just still stuck inside there. Okay, thanks for the music. Really helps. What? What? I'm scared enough already. Jeez. No foreign contaminants beyond this point. Oh, must be the structure shell. Yeah, yeah, let me in, let me in, let me in, let me in. Clean room. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Why is his head? Why is his head? Okay. Is that you? Here's the structure gel. Oh, cool. Okay, there's a panel. There's a console here. What's this about? Oh, look. There's there's dates on these. Uh, okay, two. And then it load. Then it began to oh god and and this is it ta-da that's from the petri dish oh my look at that listen to me uh, maybe later okay uh, Lisa Cameron the structure gel has been charged and actually keeps going for a while even when removed from a power source if applied to circuits it seems to help out with connectivity it seems it's not only connectivity but even functionality the gel can make simple machinery work and act more efficiently however the modifications that the wow has made to the gel are full of extra information that doesn't necessarily make sense when applied to you mind? I'm reading here. When applied to something more complicated, it causes the gel to act as a cancer upon the host, eventually ruining it. We could use the gel to our advantage, but it needs to be uncalibrated to get rid of the bad code. Apply gel to dead mouse. The gel caused the mouse to appear alive. It was put into the same habitat as a living mouse. The reanimated mouse was was apathetic while the living one seemed stress. After 15 minutes, the reanimated mouse attacked and killed the living mouse. Half an hour later, the reanimated mouse stopped moving. The corpse was solid as the gel has hardened within it. Reanimating another mouse with structure gel. This time it was done with uncalibrated gel as produced by Eames. The results... You mind? The results were impressive. The thing appears catatonic, but it's more of a sleepwalker. To avoid the thing hardening as before electromagnetics are used to cause a low electrical current within the animal. This has also provided us the ability to somewhat control it. Chemical analysis. The structure gel remains unchanged for a fundamental on a fundamental level. 
Uh, it's still the same cross-link gel with aligned graphene in a polysaturated matrix that was installed throughout Pathos 2 a few years ago. The problem is not the gel, but its controller, the WoW. The gel has not taken on any new properties. The WoW simply uses it in a way that we would even, never even have dreamed of. Study results. Overwhelming evidence includes, concludes that all deformed creatures, the fish, the sharks, and even the helpers were manipulated by the WoW via structure gel. They have in some manner been exposed to charged gel and in turn stricken by a cancerous growths that affect their whole being. An eternal nightmare. It's difficult to ask why when talking about an AI, but it all started shortly after the comet killed the surface. I can't for sure say if it's a bad code or a careful program mercy killing, but it looks like it's not going to make things easier for us to survive. Stretch your gel! Open! Ah. Never seen something of that speed. Method... Oh, okay. So the control chip here is broken. We take this out. Can I put it here? No? Oh, okay. We gotta go here. Have to close the door then. You know. You never know by what attack us. There's the rat. Whoa, that's cool. The chip inside. And there's no rat. Wow, that's cool. And there's this. Huh. What? Okay, what's the point then? Take it? Oh no, okay. I'll just put this back inside then. Okay, sure. Don't mind me. I'm just... Oh. Okay. <gasps> we can also do it to the same one! Wait, wait, wait. Let's do it here. I want to see what it does to the ratty. There we go. Dispass gel. Put you. <gasps> it's alive. It came back to life. Something like it. Can we open it? Can I say it? We love you. Hi! You're so cute! You're so cute! Go back inside there. There we go. This past gel. Bloop, 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 bloop. Oh, it makes it efficient, the structure shell. I'm gonna press on that. I'm gonna press on this red button, and then I'm gonna take this one. That side, 
and we're all happy. We're so happy. What did I get inside there? <laughs> Do it. Ah. Ooh, wow. That's one. Mind if I let me in there? All right, I think we're done here. Got to yes, clean me. Clean me. Cleanse my body. I'm not carrying anything, see? Jump on me, man. Okay. Okay. Sure it is. I mean, they just try to scare you, I guess. I got the gel, I got the gel, I got the gel, oh hell yeah, man. We need to get you a new Cortex chip, just like the ones you find inside robots, so we can store your brain. Brain. Okay, so I guess that's one chip. Okay, so I'm gonna end this episode here. Thank you so much for watching and I still need to find the others. So that took some time. Well, I took my time though and I'll do that then in the next episode. This is Big Warrior and I'm out of here.